launch. Lots of water to help dissipate all that heat, all that sound. And then the engine starting up in three Which different items. groups. And then about a second after T0, we should see liftoff. Uh, about two and a half minutes into the flight, a little bit longer, we'll see hot staging. And that's seconds. when we're going to be listening really close on those loops to see if we're going to be bringing the booster back for a catch today. Do always want to caution. It's never a guarantee. We've done this once. We'll see if we'll do, we do it again. We're only going to do it if the booster and the tower are looking really good uh, before we attempt to bring it back here. But coming up on a minute, not tracking any holds on the board right now. So as long as we don't have any last second things, which do happen. Next hold gate is in 20 seconds. All right, flight director just confirmed T minus gotcha one fact. minute. Thank you for the bits. Okay, we should be entering the hold gate here. If they go, uh, they go below 40 T seconds, you know the hold gate's open. It means seconds, we're good to go. That T minus 40. Here we go. Inside of 40. And we flew right through that. Here we go. 30 seconds. Flight director is go for launch. Flight director reports go. All right, we're now T minus 20 seconds until liftoff of Starship Flight 6. This will mark our second 15, attempt to 14, catch the 13, super heavy booster 12, at the 11, launch tower. 10. As well as pressure should turn on. Ignition. We got ignition and liftoff. Liftoff, Starship Flight 6. Vehicles cleared the tower. Vehicle is pitching down range. Okay, everything's looking good there. Vehicle's doing the roll, roll program. T-plus 40 seconds into the flight. Oh, something came off. Booster and ship, avionics, power, and telemetry nominal. Okay, good call for avionics, power, and telemetry. 50 seconds into the flight booster, now traveling at 1,000 kilometers an hour, 7 kilometers off the deck. Should go supersonic here in a moment. Something else came off. Field All right, reached. we're just Max. a little over a minute. Maximum dynamic pressure. We're about six miles away, so all the sound's still hitting us here. Hearing good call outs that power telemetry nominal, that's flying straight and true. We do see all 33 Raptor engines lit up on telemetry screens. At this point, we've passed through that point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, that max Q. <laughs> now coming up plus in 90 just seconds, boosters now traveling at 2,000 kilometers an hour, 21 kilometers off the deck. It's going to be hot staging, so we're going to see the six engines on the ship ignite while still attached to the booster. Just before that, we'll see all but three center engines on the booster shut down. And what we call Miko, it's most engines cut off instead of main engine. And so while we continue to watch it go up, a lot of our flight controllers looking at all the systems around the tower. Plus two Again, minutes, 3,400 kilometers an hour, 38 command. kilometers in altitude. I saw it, ARJ, yep, yep. Just about 30 seconds away from hot staging. <laughs> Should be coming up here on most engine cutoff and hot staging. Hot staging is where Starship's engines will ignite while it's still attached for a momentary second, while it's still attached to super heavy, uh, because it's a simplified staging mechanism. The best way to get your rocket away heard, for staging is we to fire its engines. tower is go for catch. Booster engine cut off. Most engine cut off. Hot flag staging. Is set for true. Ship engine start up. We have six good engines on Starship. Super Heavy's now going to turn around in Stage preparation for a catch attempt. There it goes. Right, hot staging confirmed. Booster six out of six ahead. lit on the ship. Booster boost back going. <laughs> we heard that we are go for catch. K 
Kate, Jesse, take out the views. Hopefully I got a booster so awesome. coming home real <laughs> soon. Wow, from our view here, Dan, uh, great views of planet Earth behind that super heavy booster. Every time right passing, now it is that's performing never gonna the boost back burn. Phenomenal. Good news there, telling us that the, uh, the pressures inside the ship are good. That is the second stage or the upper portion of the vehicle. Follow along with the telemetry on the bottom of your screen. Yeah, booster is currently, Super Heavy is currently in its boost back burn. This boost back burn. Power and telemetry nominal. Yeah, there's, an, there's the this shutdown. This boost back burn lasts just a little bit over a minute. So we've got a See, little, we got a shutdown approximately there. 30 seconds left. We've got a shutdown of that boost back burn. Up next will be hot stage jettison. The view from the camera on the left, or from the booster on the left hand side of your screen and then tracking cam there on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll see those grid fins. Hot station ring on divert. And we can also see that the uh, hot stage has been jettisoned. Yes, visual confirmation of that there on your Bye. screen, which is great. Now the next... Starship is following a nominal trajectory. Good call on GNC for the Starship. The next step for Booster is going into that landing burn. Again, it'll light up 13 of those engines. That's and what then, I heard, Nathan. Uh, I hope I was wrong. Pair down to three engines right before Booster catch. All right, now just real quick, we did hear the call out. Uh, boost back, or excuse me, Booster offshore divert. Unfortunately, that means that we are our no-go for the catch. Um, as we said before, both the tower and the vehicle, as well as the operators on console, have been actively evaluating the commit criteria for that, that return to the launch tower. Um, and unfortunately, we did not have a pass on those commit criteria. So we are no-go for Front. tower catch. And we did mention that we're constantly evaluating the criteria for catch. There's a lot of Enjoy things that need ocean. to go well in order to yeah. line that up. Unfortunately, today yep. we will forego booster catch today. But what you're seeing on your screen is ship uh, currently making its way towards the Indian Ocean, still looking good so far. Exactly. So views there of the booster on the left-hand side of your screen, views of the ship on the right-hand side of your screen. Now, we said before that it was not guaranteed that we would be able to make a uh, a tower catch today. So while we were hoping for it, like we said, it was pretty epic on attempt one, but uh, the safety of the teams and the public and, uh, can't risk and the, pad, and the guys. pad itself are uh, paramount. So we are accepting no compromises in any of those areas. Exactly, and we're still going to get a lot of Dude, good at, flight data at, with booster even, but especially with ship. Again, we have an additional objective today to do. Yo, maybe they'll land it intact and tow it back in. Hold on. Engine, which again will help us set us up for uh, being able to the do launch pads burns, over here somewhere. Which, which, yeah. which is important for orbital flights, and what you're seeing on your screen is a view from Super Heavy as it's making its way back down to Earth. Yeah, once again, we are attempting an offshore landing of the Super Heavy booster. Uh, so we have seen this before, uh, and it is still very fun to watch, watching <laughs> it come together. down uh, for a soft splashdown uh, off the Gulf Coast of All Texas. Right. Still going to have a landing. There's, there the, there's the thermal conditioning. Uh, we saw earlier those grid fins. There are four there's the shock. hypersonic okay, grid fins. So you can see that the landing burn has begun on the Super Heavy booster. Come on, baby. Pattern, 13 engines will light. Gone down to three, just as we expected. Come on, baby. And what an incredible view of splashdown that we got ah. today. Oh, Did super heavy. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure the buoy cam views will be pretty <laughs> awesome once again. Hey, so it looked like all right. Hopefully it water landing survived the landing. For the super heavy booster. Congrats to the SpaceX team uh, for making that milestone as well. Now, ship continues to look good. We it's in, it's that intact. That, it is that booster's intact. Listen. Well, the booster's intact. Let's go get it, baby. Let's go. Uh, continuing to react to all these amazing views that we're getting. The next milestone or it exploded, either one. is... Uh, <laughs> in terminal guidance. Great news there. Uh, Did it pop? Uh, Starship it terminal popped. guidance referring to... Oh, yeah, NSF has... Yeah, it popped. Stage. Never mind. Uh, Forget I said uh, anything. About <laughs> eight blew up. minutes, 35 <laughs> seconds or so, we have ship engine Dude, cutoff. Engine section the cutoff cam. of the... Uh, the, the Raptor engines. Oh, man. 
Okay. We can see on our screen, ship giving us some incredible views brought to us by Starlink. Uh, this view is also very interesting because we can see basically the receding tile line that we referred to earlier, where we mentioned we have removed a number of heat shield tiles in order to test out and push the envelope on the ship and demonstrate what well, its capabilities are. Ship engine cut off. Okay, 26495 staging at 150. Seco, ship engine cut off. Great news there. Everything continuing to out the engines awesome. there. That's that flow phenomenon you see going on there. Full view looking aft on Dude, ship here. Engine cam. That's awesome. Ship FTS is saved. Nominal orbit insertion. Good call for nominal call? orbit We're insertion. For All right. Confirmation of good orbital insertion for ship today. It has been a very exciting afternoon like tech, so far. Uh, we'd like to send it back over to Dan, who can give us that uh, <laughs> live view experience. Dan, uh, once again, are you okay after witnessing <laughs> another Starship launch? Yeah, uh, totally fine. Uh, it's you guys have to be jealous. This is the only way to do this. This is fantastic. Uh, no, it was really cool to see a lift off. 33 out of 33. Uh, didn't go for the booster catch today. Initially, we were good, and then we tripped a, a commit criteria and did the offshore divert. So we went and did that water landing, as everybody saw. Uh, we'll dig into it a little bit more. Uh, but again, this is we've done it once. We've now done it twice. We're going to keep trying to do it as this is just a core capability of Starship and what's going to make it so incredible. Uh, there's a lot left. We're just about almost 10 minutes into this flight. Uh, so about 50 plus minutes still to go. Ship nominal orbit. So it's on its way around the planet. It's going to attempt to do an in-space burn. We're going to light one of those Raptor engines, the sea level ones in the middle, uh, just to help demonstrate that we can relight in that microgravity environment. Really critical for D orbit burns uh, as we start to do some orbital missions uh, in the not too distant future um, and then following that we'll see a ship entry maybe a splashdown as you guys said we're, we're really going to be pushing ship on this one uh, we're pretty much intentionally putting it in places where we expect it might not do so great and all that's to try and in. help us learn see if we we're a little too conservative and then maybe that opens up more capability for when we start catching them but uh, I'll check back in with everybody in a little bit uh, I'm going to tune in and watch the ship fly around planet Earth, uh, and up, hopefully man? we see it re-entering in the not-too-distant future. Back so, over to you guys. Basically, what, what happened is is there's what's called the commit criteria for the booster. After after the boost back burn, if if there's even remotely something on any of the sensors that the, that the computers on board don't like, it's just going to divert into the ocean. Why? Why would you do this? Well, because if you try to do the landing and the computer sees something that it doesn't like, it crashes into the pad and blows up. We don't want that. SpaceX doesn't want to risk. We don't want that as space flight fans because that means less launches. SpaceX doesn't want that because they don't want their multi-billion dollar launch pad getting destroyed. Make sense? So this one, unfortunately, did divert in the ocean. It did a soft landing. It looked right. The landing looked great. It's it's a shame, uh, you know... Hopefully they we get some information in the future on why the commit criteria wasn't met for a catch. But that don't go anywhere. There's still plenty of tests left. We're gonna basically see this thing get roasted on re-entry in about 30 minutes, give or take. I have it on. Snackless, yes. Through re-entry with no communication right, blackout. Okay. Now we still we are still testing yeah, Starlink Jess, during I the space of flight, NSF. so nothing is completely certain. Yeah, so took, if took we do second, have views, re we will be it. sure to bring those to you live. And of course, one of those views include that of our, as we said before, surprise payload, the banana. Uh, and we are looking forward to it. So um, we're going to come back in a few minutes, around T plus 35 minutes. Exactly. Views or no views, we'll see you back here at T plus 40 minutes for our coverage of Starship's reentry. It looks like some maneuver, super heavy landing burn, and out. hopefully see a splashdown. No problem, Nick.
pretty cool though. I'm bumming they didn't do a catch, but it's okay. There will be other times. You can be dang sure that because that booster crashed so dang close to Boca Chica, SpaceX is probably going to send out the recovery vessel. They'll probably go get parts of it back. That's what they've been doing uh, up until the booster that they caught. They sent out, they, they are contracting deep sea scuba divers to go and grab pieces of their boosters on the from the ocean. They're probably, thir booster 13 is probably no exception to this. I know, I can see it on NSF. It's definitely still floating. Part of it is still floating out there, which is nuts to me, dude. Yeah, Ned, I, I can see it. Yeah, it's, it, uh, you know. Thoughts on the launch, notice anything. I saw some outgassing at about 10 seconds into flight mutter, and it didn't look like ice coming off, so. Yeah, that, that seemed a little bit anomalous, but I don't know if it is, because they space it's hard to say what, what is right and what isn't, because SpaceX changes the they change all the parameters every time. The booster pop, pigeon, yeah, it's it this This booster is no more. It has ceased to be. It looks like the engine section is somehow still floating, Riv, from what I can tell, but it's hard to say, dude. It's I, I don't want to jump to any conclusions. I'd have to get the map to do that. Test shot starfish is usually fair game, Medic. It was a flight termination system, size up, I'm pretty sure. Banana cam! Banana cam! <laughs> oh, come on, go back to that. No, I don't want to stand by. Go back to the banana. Banana. Well, the ship ain't coming. Teddy, they're not going to get the ship back. They're going to land it. and If it's still in one piece, they'll probably dispose of it once it gets near the surface. So, we're getting that banana back. So, guys, look. There's still gases moving around inside of the payload bay, which means it's, it's relatively pressurized. It's probably leaking because you're seeing gas move around. But, pretty cool, huh? There's still, there's still air inside of that thing. But like I said, that air is moving around, so it's leaking a little bit. Don't shake your banana in my face. Why? What? You don't? Why? Hand banana, no! Sorry, I won't do that again. <laughs> the gas goes in the square hole, that's right. Nothing of the booster is left. Can I have banana bread, please? No, if I'm making banana bread, it's for me. I wonder why they don't have vents in the payload bay like the shuttle did? They clearly do, Bill, because the gas is moving around. There's a leak somewhere. Whether it's intentional or not, I don't know. In terms of why they haven't had like a fully fleshed out positive pressure venting system on Starship, mm. probably too early in the design if I had to guess, dude. Should I be a bit upset about not seeing a Kench? You're just gonna have to watch the next one. You're just gonna have to watch Flight 7. But guys, we're not done here, man. Look at that. Ship 31's flying over the Terminator. So once again, part of the reason why they launched this thing late in the day is because Starship's gonna fly about halfway around the world. It's gonna it's gonna do a landing attempt off the coast of Australia, like far enough away where you probably can't see it from the shore. And by probably, I mean you can't. Uh, but it's morning in Australia. It's morning in Western Australia. The sun's up, so they're gonna get you're gonna get a re-entry in the daytime, which is cool. If this thing actually makes it through. We'll be able to like see the ground when Starship flips over and, and lands if it makes it that far. Hopefully it does. 
Gas could be moving because of the RCS. It could be momentum. That's right, Slimbo. That's a good point. Is it just me or Starlink a bit more potato-y today? Looks all right to me, Just Space. The relight should be happening in about 10 to 15 minutes, David. What happened to the camera? It's dark. That's what happened to the camera. Look at the Terminator, dude. This is a live stream shot being streamed to your computer or electronic device from a spacecraft that's the size of a 15-story building in space watching the sunrise. You know, I get it. I get it. 2024, you know, you know, it's been a it's been a been a rough couple of years, but you know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, man. We're looking at we're watching a piece of fruit float around in space. That's pretty neat. <laughs> Am I right? That's pretty good, man. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's a piece of fruit floating around in space. Okay. I saw it, Transit Biker. They did have some FOD come off. Yeah, there were some, some parts came off the vehicle. Too fast. We have come full circle from the Wheel of Cheese. Yep. But is it a real banana? I think they said it was a stuffed banana, guys. Can you tell us anything about that truss structure? Yeah, sure. Dog, that truss structure is the Pez... Is the, SpaceX calls it the Pez dispenser. So what they're going to do is they're going to stack up the Starlink satellites in those kind of four rails that are on the side. Uh, and then there's a basically a payload bay door on starship that's about the size like it looks like a letter opener like if you have a door that has a spot for the mail to come in it basically looks like looks and works something similar to that and uh the first payloads that starship will deploy are starlink v2 satellites right and they just stack them in this pez dispenser and this pez dispenser shoots them out the letter box the letter box door another one comes down shoots it out another one comes down shoots it out another one comes down shoots it out uh you, see so over there, check this out. See that? That's the letterbox door, right? There's your rails right there. And this is your dispenser. Erecting a dispenser. See? Starling, th this truss segment piece here will move down, right? And it'll push a Starlink satellite onto this dispenser piece right here. The letterbox will open and it'll, sh it'll zip it out. Yeah, that's what you're looking at here. Cool thing to cool thing to look at, guys. They have a lot of COPVs. These are bottles over here. Those are I'm not sure exactly what those for. I know uh, those are for. I know what they do though. These composite overwrap pressure vessels are carrying pneumatic gases. They could be carrying CO2, could be carrying nitrogen, most likely nitrogen if I had to guess. Uh, but note that these are mounted basically on the bottom of the payload bay. So on this starship, they're like right here inside, right? Because the door, the, the letter, the payload bay door is right here, right? So it, we saw the payload bay door on one side. So you, you know that those COPVs are mounted low. That's most likely for stability when Starship is doing its belly flop. You want to keep the center of gravity low because wherever the center of gravity is, whatever side it's biased to is the side that's going to fly first when you come, you know, if you kind of come in ballistic and you're subject to physics. I saw it, RB. Yeah, yeah. The tower is damaged? I don't think the tower is damaged. They called nominal tower in Taris, but I don't know. The communications tower was damaged during ascent. That probably is what aborted it. Oh, yeah. No, that's broken. Yeah, the little, the communications antenna on top of it, on top of the tower is busted. Here, guys, I'll, I, I can show you. So this is uh, from our buddies over at NSF. Look at the bottom right frame. See that? Yeah, see that? That's not supposed to do that. 
That, yeah, it, yeah, okay, that's fair. If we were gonna call abort criteria, yeah, the 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 antenna, so the booster can figure out where the tower is. You probably need that, and it looks like it's broken. I, that is preliminary. I'm guessing. Everybody's guessing at this point. We'll wait on official word from SpaceX, but that very much seems like that's what's going on there. Oh, something. Little piece of ice floating around in the payload bay. Yeah, I saw it on the send launch. I can't restream the send launch. It'll get, it'll get tagged. Trey, I can't restream the send stuff. Guys, we'll get copy striked. Sorry, can't do it. No puedo. How did ice get in there? It could be solid nitrogen, Graham, from outgassing from these tanks. If there's an open vent inside, sometimes it could be it could be some of the atmosphere that Starship captured inside of its payload bay, freezing on the way up. Yeah, that that's that would be my guess. How do they plan to slow the ship on re-entry to Mars with a lower atmosphere than Earth? Uh, a shallower re-entry trajectory for you would help with that. So basically, instead of like coming down at Mars surface like this, you basically glide along the surface for a long period of time. That will that will reduce your overall peak heating, but lengthen your uh, period of heating. And it'll also because your because your duration of heating is a lot longer. You're making more drag. You slow down more. Doesn't take much to capture Mars, even though Mars has a little wimpy atmosphere. It doesn't take a lot. Yeah, Henris, yeah, it's all speculation until we hear something from SpaceX. But yeah, that that would also do it. I didn't, the hot staging ring separation looked okay to me. But they did call, uh, they, they did call the deferred abort right after hot staging ring separation. So Scott could be right, I don't know. What is this music? It's Test Shot Starfish, if I'm understanding this right. That is a banana in the payload bay, Silversol. Yep. Tower probably fell after, but I'd have to look at NSF's footage. Guys, give me one second. Tower got bent during launch. Oh, so yeah, tower got bent during ascent. Yeah, it it yeah, the tower got a little messed up. Yeah, tower got a little messed up. I'm looking at the banana. Give it, give it to me. Give it, give it the banana. Could be, Bren. The whole tower? No, 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 no. Not the whole tower. Look. So check out, check out this from NSF. See this? The antenna on the very top of the tower? That shouldn't be like that. That should be pointed straight up. It's clearly not pointed straight up, but it might buff out. Who knows? They also said towers go for catch. Yeah. It may, I mean, it's still standing, so who knows? But I, I would be looking into why that did that, uh. But we'll have to see. What a test today. Yes, Rob. Because <laughs> the cameras are old, Yolanda. Not these. Does the offshore divert mean that the FAA want to investigate it? No, probably not, Reaper. The FAA really only will come knocking on your door if you endanger public safety. A known divert pathway that was planned for the booster as a contingency is not is not endangering public safety. That's following the plan per your own flight rules. I don't think there will be a mishap investigation. I mean, but once again, we'll wait on the FAA. 
you know, I don't want to, don't want to postulate too much. Yeah, that's your vocab word of the day. <laughs> Defcon, come on, don't, don't do that in here, man, please. I'm just enjoying the view of a banana. <laughs> yeah, human. The most important question is whether they will recover the banana. I hope so, man. What do you think triggered it? I don't know, Bartsy. I'd have to go back and look at the footage, but I don't... I... As long as the mission is still going, Bart's, I don't like going back and looking at other footage. The last time I did that during a Starship mission, it blew up and I missed it. I missed SN10, uh, SN10 inting itself. Uh, because I was looking at replays. So I always, I always sit here and leave it live until the end of the mission. It belongs in a museum. The booster is floating, but it's a little misshapen. Maybe. See what the Burgenator is saying. I still have the stream up just in case anything happens. So that's so this is uh, footage from our buddies over at NSF. No, Graham, black smoke is not bad. It's just unburnt fuel. Okay, she tipped over. Yeah, that's not a thing anymore. That This booster is no more. It has ceased to be. second let me get us let me get the banana back on the big screen i think we'll have to wait until 2025 for the next one yeah galax most likely but not a long time dude not long you don't have to worry about turning around the pad there's no booster <laughs> you didn't get the booster so yeah i think the next one will go Check whisper. I have no idea how that's relevant, Bree, but yes, it's a nice whisper. <laughs> yeah, Wolfman, that's what I've been seeing. They might get pieces of it back, Yacht Plate, but some, you know, when the booster lands, it lands relatively intact. The problem is, is when it tips over, you know, it, when it tips over, it either ruptured a, a fuel tank or they blew it up on purpose. So either way, it exploded. So, I mean, it's not that far offshore. You might go get bits and pieces, dude. And SpaceX has done that. They did that with Booster 11 on Flight 4. I think we're going to get a view of the banana during re-entry. I hope so. They just have to retrieve it and put rice in it until it dries out. Heightmare, that's what they did with Booster 11. They pulled Booster 11 out of the water, at least the engine section, and then they 
Dude, they took the engine, they took the rocket engines from Booster 11, a booster that soft landed in the ocean like that and then spent like three months at the bottom of the ocean. They took the engines and sent them to McGregor, their engine testing site. And we don't know what happened. We don't know what happened with them from there, dude. <laughs> the launch happened, thank you. Yeah, we're T plus 33 minutes and 20 seconds into flight here. We're, the next things that we're coming up to is Starship uh, doing a, its first ever attempt to fire its engines well up in space and then uh, re-entry. So that should be fun. There's also a banana floating around. That's their zero G indicator, a banana. They took one for 40 refires, Deadbringer. I can't, you know what? You know what? Let's, I'm just, I just want to think that that booster that they put on that, the engine that they put on that test stand was a booster 11 booster. I just want to think that to make myself feel better. It's very unlikely that that's the case, but also, so you're saying, there's a chance. It is floating around, yep. Yeah. Any word on why the catch was diverted? Haven't heard anything uh, of substance, Kenny. It's a lot of speculation. Beer on you. Thanks, Tech. Space Pope, thank you for the bits. I do appreciate it. We get the poster Mechazilla? Maybe. Yeah, I know, 95. Do you think they'll recover the banana? I want to believe Beige Guy, but I don't think so. SpaceX tweet. Tower was a go. Booster had a fault of some kind from what you heard. Yeah. Yeah, Medic. Uh, I would say, even though the tower has a bent antenna, it's more likely something than what Weirdo with the booster. Continuing to get some live views from Starship itself as it continues to make its way around the globe. Uh, we are coming up on what we will hopefully see uh, is our in-space relight demonstration. This will be firing up one of those uh, three sea-level raptors on, on the very aft end of the that. ship um, and essentially reigniting it uh, while we're in that there we go. Environment see it? In Earth look at the lightning. That's uh, a thunderstorm down on the surface. Look, look, look. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Skipping it when we had some attitude control issues uh, with the ship. And we are on the dark side of the planet right now. So Wait. views are going to be a little bit dark. Hold on. Skipping it when we had some attitude control issues. Firing up one of those uh, three sea level raptors on the very aft end of the ship. Um, and essentially reigniting it uh, while we're in that microgravity environment in Earth orbit. Uh, we had attempted this once previously on okay. Flight 3, but ended up skipping it when we had some attitude control issues uh, with the ship. Yeah, okay. They, he's talking about a previous flight. We're okay. on a intentional suborbital trajectory. Um, so no matter what, we're coming in over the... What time should it land? Uh, Javi, uh, uh, change your exact splash 10 minutes? Point a little bit, but we've got this keep out zone across the entire Indian Ocean that we made sure was clear ahead of flight. That's the rain uh, down in Africa. Bearing, we're we're going to aim for that and do, hopefully do, see this relay test do, coming do, on do. in about a minute. It's just going to be one of these engines uh, and it uses what's called the header tank. So these small spherical tanks. What is the glowing? The very top of Starship. Ruster firing, guys. Uh, they're, they don't require nearly as much gas to, well, did, to did you see the rains down in Africa tank so they're really useful for uh, any uh, in orbit maneuvers um, and then for landing burn so if we make it to a landing burn today we'll be using them uh, for that as well uh, so we should be coming up in just about the next minute should be under a minute now away from that expected ship burn and again these this is we've relit Raptors pretty frequently uh, we just did it with the landing burn uh, and that boost back burn on the booster, and we've done it on ship landing burns. Uh, we just haven't done it in this microgravity environment where your propellant management and a lot of other things are different uh, as you're not like down the force of Earth's gravity. Okay, here we go. We got a good ignition. Velocity is changing. Telemetry is updating. And start the call out for startup. 
Yes! There's some light. Excellent! There's that Raptor relit. Solid and oxygen. Down. Have they relit right, yet? I think it. so, the Hokey. First time ever lighting a Raptor while in outer space, other than our ascent burn. Um, so really cool to see that relit. That's that's a pretty That was really, that's a big deal, that guys. That's huge. Need, uh, when we're doing orbital missions in the not too distant future. Uh, so check another one off. Uh, that was that was a really cool. Uh, that was an objective we really wanted to hit on this one, and so good to see ship uh, knock that one out in orbit. Uh, but for now, we're going to coast for just a little bit longer, and then it'll be time for ship entry. So we'll get the usual light show um, as we return to hypersonic velocities. For entry interface. Uh, we're just starting to do the entry prep for that, so we're going to get the flaps positioned, uh, and then it's going to start taking the brunt of, of all of that heat as you're coming in from uh, well well in excess of 10,000 miles an hour. Uh, that's all going to build up a lot of heat as you're encountering an increasing atmosphere, building up that friction. And we're going to see how yeah, the tiles fare. We've we also got about that here. Uh, some pretty space. cool tiles talk about space in that we'll talk brother, about in a little could. bit. But uh, coming up real soon, ship re-entry, re successful relight, uh, and we'll start this entry part soon. lights down there see those are cities over there guys that's it's hard to see from this camera but yeah see cities just make sure we're live okay it looks like we're getting sunrise here in a second so if I'm looking at the timing, where that's probably they're probably flying over Madagascar right now. It's close, Everest. Yeah, maybe. You're not gonna get plasma just yet, Dean. No. Um, so the vehicle is still accelerating. Uh, we should be coming up on entry interface here soon in a second. But don't get me wrong. Just because the vehicle is accelerating doesn't mean you haven't hit entry interface. We'll wait for the call. Nice weather, guy. That's cool. I mean, it looks... Yeah, maybe. Maybe it is, dudes. It's plasma, guys. Yep. Nope. That's definitely plasma. We're past EI. I was a little bit wrong on the timeline there. Interesting, Trey. So, guys, you know, they said that, yeah, SpaceX is saying that you have interface at, interface at 47 minutes. That's what I was going off flight five, right? But we're already seeing plasma here. But that also could be kind of a little bit of an optical illusion. The boost, the, the ship could be outgassing and the, the gases, I'm going to sound like Will Smith from Men in Black here. The gases could be illuminated from the sunlight. But I don't know. That looks, it looks pretty bright to me. Yes, TJ. Camera ISO is probably high. Yeah, that's probably why these cameras look all foggy, and oh, that's a good point. It's gonna be more aggressive after re-entry through through the landing. Yeah, mutter. That's why I thought it might be, you know, just the sunlight. But I mean, you're getting you're definitely getting some plasma propagation down here. Um, guys, I'm gonna move back over there. Uh, move back over here so you guys can see it.
The landing will be in the daytime, Dennis. Yep, just at dawn. No, Stone, not at all. I have no oh, idea what that is. Altitude. Good altitude for atmospheric entry. I have no idea what that means, RB. Okay, starting to see. Yep, we're starting to see some. Uh, we're starting to see a bow shock here. Please don't block the ship attitude. I go over here, and then people say, don't block the ship issue, so. Look at the vent line. See all the solid oxygen on the vent line? Look at that, baby. Pretty cool. Thanks, Civex. Nah, I'm good. I'm good right here. I like this spot. This is a good spot, especially with these camera angles. We got multi views from SpaceX, which is really cool. It did super, it worked. Yep, she's starting to decelerate. Something like that, RB. did Orion, but we can probably watch Welcome it Welcome back to Starship 6 test flight. Okay, here we go. It has been an exciting day so far. We lifted off from Starbase at 4 p.m. Central Time. The Super Heavy Booster and ship had a successful separation as well as a good boost back burn and good separation of the hot stage Only at adapter. the end of We of did not landing, attempt guys. a return to the launch site and catch attempt today when strict criteria were not met and the Super Heavy Booster executed a planned divert to a landing burn and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, obviously we were hoping to come back to the tower, but Thanks, uh, this was a test and we knew Appreciate that it, it was a very viable possibility. Starship is at 85 kilometers. Flaps now have control of the vehicle. Okay. All right, great news there, turning our attention over to This the part of entry, guys, is the, the same as five, here, so we'll see what happens. Amazing views once again. Uh, we heard the call out. What you guys really, what we really want to look for, okay? So for the uninitiated, when it comes to hypersonic flows and re-entry and stuff, all right, what you really don't, what you really are looking to not get is sparks. You don't want sparks coming off the vehicle. That means you're getting ablated. You're getting some ablation. Ablation means something is burning off the vehicle. Now, I don't know, for the uninitiated, just in case you didn't know, you do not want that to happen with your vehicle that someday, not this flight, but someday you're planning on reusing. You do not want ablation here so you want to see nice smooth plasma flow just like that and that's exactly what you're looking at here that is smooth plasma flow you want this you don't want sparks you start seeing sparks that's uh, not ideal keep in mind you might see a little bit here and there we don't want a lot of sparks we don't want it to look like a fireworks show here because that means the vehicle's breaking up <laughs> that's not good we can see that starting to happen on our screen and this creates a plasma field around the vehicle that blanket of plasma distorts communication frequencies so it's not uncommon that. to the flow. experience oh. brief blackouts in communication oh so what you're seeing there with smoke coming off there is the uh thrusters the 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 attitude control thrusters on starship approaching the peak heating phase of entry okay see the thrusters firing 
and we just heard we're getting into the the peak heating phase we're getting these views courtesy See, of those Starlink. are the thruster We've firings right there uh, different terminals on the ship itself it's what's potentially really allowed us bandit, to get yes. real-time data during what's otherwise been right, just a, a mystery box essentially for spacecraft design where you, when you're re-entering through the atmosphere uh, at least getting anything in real time uh, hasn't ever been possible before but we're able to not oh. just get these views but real-time telemetry nice from the smooth, ship as man. it's coming nice through. and smooth um do really want to stress that we are we are really pushing the ship today uh the heat shield is not in the same configuration as it was last flight where flight just we had a team of ship techs do just an otherworldly task replacing the entire heat shield thousands of tiles installing a backup ablative and that pretty much set us up to do a, a pinpoint landing on flight five we did not it's do solid that oxygen with this off one. of event line we have laid off some backup in those really this sensitive stuff right areas there around the flight. solid oxygen uh, but this mm -hmm. is an older this is generation old vent shield. line and knowing we weren't going to do that we even went and removed some extra tiles there are some missing tiles on the nose cone where we're testing some backups there are some steel yeah, a little bit of ablation going on there but it's okay spots uh, and there's also a whole lot more steel of the ship showing what you really want to look for they they usually spacex on the past three starship flights has had some real well past two starship flights that had some real problems at the forward flaps basically the armpit the, the armpit of those forward flaps up at the front of the vehicle when they go back to that multi-view something is ablating off when they go back to that multi-view i'll yeah watch the armpit of the flaps like right at the edge Starship in order to uh, basically present that necessary receding oh. line, which you kind of can see there. Yeah, in your getting view. a little bit of ablation uh, there. Something, something's flights, burning the, off. The heat yeah, you want to watch right down here. Further on the vehicle, and just like Dan said, we want to test the vehicle beyond what we think it is capable of no, carrying based on right. our simulations and calculations. Um, so once again, to just be super plain. Don't be surprised if we see some wackadoodle stuff happen here. Um, wackadoodle? <laughs> we won't be. Uh, there are a number of things that we are testing out intentionally to see what the ship can take. Yeah, exactly. And knowing what those limits are will, will, will really help us design the vehicle of the future. Yeah, see, um, see the sparks up there that you really don't want that. A lot that, of weight but... from the vehicle, a lot of things that might potentially need refurbishment in the future. Um, and the goal is to come up with a heat shield pattern or design that we don't have to refurbish. We can just continue to use it over Something's and over ablating. again. Something's ablating. That's starboard, why we're starboard changing some of those tiles side. and... Uh, moving stuff around port side moving looks okay those tiles, this camera is uh, on the one of the front fins exactly. this camera is on this fin you know, looking, looking backwards forward to the starship capability of the future we want to be able to catch starship like we do with boosters and so the next flight i'm not i'm not uh, i'm not liking this better understand where sparks we can not not liking that something's not burning off do <laughs> that's to see you know, that it's probably not good in those spots and today now keep in mind this is an older design for spacex's thermal protection system they've already optimized and fixed a lot of the problems with the newer version of the ship this is the last of the older versions of the ship so yeah, that problem might already be solved, but also, yeah, something is burning on the bottom of the vehicle, so probably smells terrific. Doing to try and, you know, make all the ships that were about to start flying even better, just really understand what they're It's too consistent to be the backup be. of later Aqualux. We've got kind of the next gen ship lined up for flight. Yeah, seven. exactly. Passing yeah, all yeah. of those heat shield upgrades and everything. Don't worry. Uh, She'll hold one together. Of the things that we're going to be doing that's, Hear me, that's baby, most hold interesting. Together. And one of the reasons we wanted daylight is we're going to be flying pretty aggressively as ship comes in. We're going to be kind of nose down and we've done it in wind tunnels. Looks we've like done we're getting some daylight. You might see the flaps really flapping around trying to control the vehicle. Um, we're, we're betting we might have a little bit more capability. Never tell me the odds. <laughs> we think in just the analysis, but always a chance that bet doesn't pay off. Uh, but that just helps us know, like, what are, what are our Starship limits? Starship is now halfway through the peak heating phase of entry. Okay. Sweet. Halfway there. Halfway home, guys. Yeah, and if you oh. guys again can follow Some along with the, off the leading edge of that the speed flap. of See it right there. See stuff's burning its way off. Back down to Earth, bottom right-hand corner of your screen. This is gonna uh, get a little sketchy. Is still going <laughs> this is gonna really, get a little really sketchy, fast. man. Again, as it gets closer to Earth, 
um, we'll see that altitude drop. Those are the thrusters firing. Kind of dropping pretty slow right now. Um, and again, it as pushes we get the thruster closer gassing closer closer immediately into the low pressure areas, which the surface what gives you that weird the water, flow. Then we'll start to see that speed pick up. Um, and if we can make it through this re-entry, uh, yes, we will attempt to do that flip maneuver once again uh, and splash down in the ocean. Exactly. Um, Not like seeing any saying, burn through there on the testing on the control surfaces, though. The perceived limits of the vehicle. Um, we want to go learn more about the ship, and this is a great opportunity to do that. So really pushing the flight hardware in a flight environment uh, to help inform these future designs. Um, uh, as we mentioned, go burn. it has a different heat shield. <laughs> oh, this dear. heat shield is uh, a uh, oops, not the oops, same generation oops, as what we flew last time. This one is one generation good. older. So Hold together, uh, baby. we are also testing out new secondary thermal protection uh, materials. So basically, like if the heat shield isn't in this one spot, can this other material protect the metal is the thinking there. Uh, also, checking of the yeah, ship's structural I see it, strength Aqualux, right in here, those huh? areas where we're looking to add that ship catch hardware just to see if it survives entry. Yeah, the steel so, might, yeah, the as steel we've might saying, be... We've, we've done um, a lot of calculations and simulations. Uh, this view right here is super <laughs> cool. This is looking out from the aft engine bay, basically at the know, bottom of Starship. To be like that. Um, then on the center left hand panel, if you will, we have one of look, the... Look, 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 look. Daytime's flaps, starting, dude. Flaps, you can so see the clouds down there. At the top of the vehicle. Underneath that is one of the aft end flaps. I like see it, Medic. I see it. <laughs> She's not happy. On right -hand side Come on, screen. Ship 31. Make it now, through. As the vehicle hold hold bananas. I'm in hand bananas. Once again here at SpaceX and Hawthorne as folks tune in as the mission continues on. Oh, it's getting now, spicy. Next event something something, something on the front of this thing's getting real uh, spicy. We should hear the call out that the vehicle is transonic around T plus diamond hour, hand bananas. So. <laughs> that means that the vehicle is traveling near the speed of sound. We, we say near the speed of sound because there are certain parts of the vehicle where airflow is going faster and other parts where it's going slower. So it kind of teeters there on the brink of, of the speed of sound. There's so, a lot of pieces um, coming off. There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of this boost is burning off parts, here, guys. And we'll hear it subsonic. Yeah, and I... Oh, and almost, real quick, almost a reverse of... I'm sorry, Jesse. Almost a reverse of before. We see the Earth starting to come into view. We've got, <gasps> we've got sunrise there over over the Indian Ocean. So this is this is going to look different from any of the re-entries we've had before. And it was specifically so, like, we, we get as much daylight as possible to see how ship does this. So... Bled off about a third of orbital velocity. We yeah, still got 18,000 kilometers to go. That's exactly what I was going to point out is that we're getting a lot clearer view of the Earth in the background with Dude, uh, the different temperatures this is awesome. that we're seeing with the different colors um, of that plasma around the ship, which is really, really cool to see. Again, um, we are pushing the limits of ship today, um, but so far everything is looking pretty nominal. Um, yeah. We'll see how the next few minutes goes. <laughs> yeah. Like we've said before, don't be surprised if this is not entirely smooth sailing <laughs> all the way down to the ocean surface. Uh, Similar to Flight 5, we are targeting uh, the same splashdown location in the Indian Ocean, but we are not expecting to recover the vehicle. Right. And we were getting some glimpses of the flaps. The flaps <laughs> it's giving so me so much anxiety right now, dude. We're not seeing <laughs> but, any burn through. There's yeah. those flaps again. No burn through. Uh, that hinge area, Something is burning off, though. It's, it's not um, the flaps. That's great news so. for us for now. Again, the next few minutes could change as we continuously push <laughs> those limits. Something, yeah, once, once we something's burning, down, and it ain't the flat, so I hope it's not something, something important. It's about 1,200 kilometers an hour. Uh, once we're down below that, that's that's when we're gonna. Dude, look at this shot. Down and, and <laughs> this get that so more aggressive angle of attack. Normally we're just belly yes. flop right into the yes. water, Excuse pretty me. much it's that position. Uh, but if we're gonna be able to do return to launch sites, uh, we're gonna want to be able to fly with a little bit more of an angle of attack, get you a little bit more range as you're coming through. 
And so this will this will be just a test to see Good ones, quite how far can we push it. And obviously, we're going to do these kind of tests oh, way okay. out here in super remote areas before you ever try to bring a ship back to a place like Starbase. Starship remains on a good entry trajectory. External temperatures are coming down. All right, great news there. That tells us the we. You're not out of the woods yet. The but that's good news. <laughs> that's good so news, man. Come on, hold together, uh, 31. Temperatures to Diamond hand to bananas. Down. Once again, we are targeting a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean uh, around the off the northwest coast of, of Australia. We can see these beautiful views of planet Earth coming in. Yeah, this yeah. is very different where yeah, it's we a little... had nighttime Mm -hmm. views oh. of the ship as it was re-entering and now we've got daylight it is about an hour or so after sunrise uh oh there in the uh oh Indian it's ocean. getting a little so spicy right there cool see, see it yeah and it might not uh -oh. seem like it makes a huge difference uh -oh. but we uh -oh. do get a little bit more <laughs> ship as well for the oh no have, um, which is very <laughs> beneficial for us to visually uh -oh. stay together anything and Try and correlate uh -oh. that to any of the sensors or data that we have on the vehicle. Exactly. That Give it a roll. She's got Captain. She can't take much more so of this. We could have the daylight in order to oh, improve our together. observations of the vehicle. So not only are we getting all the raw data from all the sensors that are on board Starship, but we also have multiple cameras and assets <laughs> oh, out there geez. that are watching the vehicle and will also be able to tell us with this visual story that is also very, very important. And I as see it, we though. get down a little bit lower, the Raptor engines are in their chill phase right now. So just essentially getting them. Okay. We've bled off two thirds orbital velocity for those three center engines. All she's got to do is just survive the dynamic pressure. The now, burn, so most of the reentry we'll heating is gone. Oh, 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 something's still burning off down there. Fire off those Dude, engines look at how scorched it is. And then do Yo. that final landing burn. That should be coming up in just a little over, just under five minutes from now. Uh, and I see it. I see it, Blue Player. I see it. Some call outs on Transonic and Subsonic. Come on, baby. Hold down. together. Again, Don't worry. Once you She'll hold together. Is subsonic, Hear me, baby. Hold keep together. Keep a close eye on the flaps. They, they're going to be they're going to be working overtime, essentially, uh, to maintain control of the ship as we as we get a little more aggressive with this. Almost there. Oh, <laughs> we can see that past <laughs> maximum entry dynamic pressure. It's on fire. That's not All right, great call out there. But we can see on this view here that we do have some heating there. <laughs> That's on, so it looks like one of the forward flaps on Starship. This is to be expected. We knew that the vehicle uh, would perform differently than what we had seen on flight. But five. she made it, dude. This that thing's remarkably really good intact because it tells us what parts of the vehicle at this, you know, what will see All right. be a higher angle of attack. All right, she's gonna down. make. She's gonna make it unless she's, uh, dude. It, because this stainless is all heat got all heated up. It might be brittle. It might go to do the flip and burn uh, so yeah, and just explode. News, actually, looks Let's like hope we're not out of the woods yet. Yeah, it's a little burn through. Um, again, it's quite it the observation. To note when we start seeing that um, through the ship's descent as well. So, like Kate was saying, it, we're getting some really good data here. Um, looks like uh, the nose down are should doing be a happening than the one pretty that has soon a here, Mother. Through, which is some good news. Uh, again, constantly watching. We've got a couple minutes until we're expecting uh, to make it all the way back down to Earth. Exactly. And like we said before, uh, we are not expecting to recover Testing the ship. Testing pur purposes, Although, Kalani. I don't know the exact reason why they're on the leeward yeah, I mean, side. Nice bonus if it happened, but it's not yes, really hired. our expectations Or I'm doing today. it on my phone. Um, we really want to push it the so hardware, you guys can't as we've been see saying. It. But really the telemetry and the data and the video... It's Remo this time, but I, I do tweet and stream at the same time. Truly what we're I try to keep it on the And will help inform the future designs of this vehicle. Okay. Guys, uh, we're through the heating the here. She's going to go subsonic here uh, in a moment. What you're seeing there is the flaps adjusting. Um, we have a camera. Oh, on this one is of the so flaps cool. That, that were, that, this is the so that vent over there. there is from them thermally conditioning the Raptors. They got to prime them and get them ready to fire, and get them ready to fire again the for the landing the burn. Starship um, is slowing down past Mach 1. See? Subsonic. And call outs aligning with this. You can see the orientation. Come on, hold together, baby. starting to change. You can follow that graphic at the bottom of your screen. Um, 
Again, that what is a shot. Look at this. All right. Of the so watch. They're going to dip the nose so down. Four. This is going to start to the subsonic bias drop. Remains on a good trajectory. I was going to say, watch. This is, they're going to dip. This is when things will, will start to get a little interesting. So this is when we're, we're moving slower than the speed of sound. You can see that nose slowly start to tip down. Uh, and we're going to try and maintain flap control the whole way. But we are just, just a couple minutes away from hopefully doing a landing flip. Uh, oh, this is sketchy. This, is sketchy. this is sketchy. This is sketchy. The, the, the vehicle, it's going to get very yeah, aerodynamically cool unstable with this the nose like that. Like that. Oh, please, uh, please uh, stay together. Please stay together. This is nuts. We saw the ship come back. You see it? Did and you I see the nose come back up? Oh, this perspective, I think, helps inform that. That was close. That was close to breaking. Down a little further and really be flying nose first. Um, this higher angle of attack, you know, we're intentionally doing it to stress those aft flaps and that will help inform the limits of flap control in order to collect data for future landing profiles. We're going to dip the nose again. I mean, we're looking, we're looking good so far. We've just got about five kilometers in altitude to go. We'll, we'll ignite the engines when we're still just a couple hundred meters uh, over the ground. Do that flip. So she was passing landing. through five kilometers altitude. Remains on a good trajectory. Everything's looking good. I have a feeling this is going to look so cool as it passes through the clouds. Obligatory shout out to the Two entire miles. avionics team on Star Trek. Oh! Oh, God. Oh, God. Stay together. Down orientation. Stay together. Stay together, baby. One, that one mile. The, uh, Raptor engines will relight and help flip the booster back up. This is a more severe flip given the orientation. Uh, the engines will shut down prior Thousand to meters. the water making impact. And prior to the vehicle making Look at this thing water. control. This is awesome. Ship is doing great so far. Engine relight. There's, There's those engines relighting. What a great reorientation by Starship. Dude! Dude! Oh, that's sick! Wow. Holy cow! She's alive! She's alive! Yes! Yes! Awesome! Dude! Peace! It's, all, it's a little on fire, but it's in one piece. limits on shipping and made it all the way back down to Earth. I am shocked, to be honest. <laughs> it made it. Oh, I love this are, thing. Uh, the fact that it survived all the way through so good. while flying a lesser gen heat shield is just absolutely incredible. And uh, turns out the vehicle had more capability than our calculations predicted. And that is why we <laughs> test like tank the heat. Exactly why we do that. And those views right were absolutely incredible. I just tanked it. It was like, yeah, whatever. Because of Starlink, we were able to get the views all the way down. Yeah. As well as the buoys. I uh, think the stainless the steel buckled when it hit the water, though. So I think cool. it cracked. So cool. It cracked like an <laughs> well, egg. We want to. Oh my goodness! Unfortunately, wrap up the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll say congratulations. Diamond to our hand bananas. SpaceX and to everyone who supported the Starship program, and thank you to all of our future customers for your support. We'd also like to thank the people of Cameron County, Texas, as well as the Coast Guard, the Federal Aviation Administration the government of Mexico, and the Australian Space Agency. What's that thing behind them? Uh, it's a fairing. Be sure to... The fairing is from the front. What's going on here? Hello? Jesse? Hey, guys. I, I could take it from here. Uh, that was just incredible to see, to see that splash down. Uh, as you said, thanks to everybody that took such a huge part in this everybody here at starbase that's worked on this program just really pouring your lives into it uh great to see another booster lift off we'll catch it the next time great to sh see ship in the water uh new version of ship coming soon so a lot more exciting launches coming up real soon here from starbase uh but i'll say i'll send us out this time we'll see you guys next time Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Be sure to follow SpaceX on X for updates and